Hey, hey, thanks for tuning in to the Just Janice podcast. I am your host, Janice, and we know that the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. So in this joy-filled podcast, you're going to hear real-life stories from other believers. We're going to talk about the kingdom. We're going to magnify Jesus, and it's going to be awesome. So thanks for tuning in, and here we go. Hey, hey, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of Just Janice. I am so excited for so many reasons today. I'm excited to get on here and encourage you in the Word of God to encourage your hearts. I'm excited because I am making buffalo chicken dip right now and my house is smelling really good. I'm excited because I have some incredible guests coming on the show super soon and I can't wait for you guys to hear those interviews. God is just so so good. And I'm just so thankful for all that he's doing in my life. And I'm thankful for what he's doing in your life, what he's doing in the world. And I just want to encourage your heart that God is still on the throne. I keep hearing that from so many ministers and it's so true. Like God has not left his throne. He is still on his throne in control. He is all powerful and mighty and he is doing good things in the earth. And so I think some of us just need to like shift our focus and say, hey, God, what are you doing? And let me partner with that because it's so easy to get our focus on what is happening in the world and the confusion and the chaos and all of it. But I promise you, I could share so many testimonies from 2020. Yes, from this crazy year, I could share so many stories with you about what God has been doing in my life and the lives of people around me. And I just want to encourage you that he is doing awesome and amazing things. And that honestly isn't even at all what I'm going to be talking about today, but I just felt like I was supposed to encourage you with that. So I'm excited for this message that I'm going to be sharing with you guys. And this isn't going to be super long today, but it's a message that has just been stirring in my heart the last couple of days. And I knew that I was going to record a podcast. I just finally had time tonight to do it. So a few months ago, I bought a kimono and a kimono is kind of like a cute, like, um, like cardigan or whatever that goes over a a top for like you guys out there who maybe don't know what it is. Look it up. It starts with a K kimono. And so anyway, I bought this super cute kimono and it was like, it's like Navy. Well, it's a little lighter than Navy with these flowers on it. Super, super cute. My problem was I didn't have anything that matched to wear underneath it. And so I went shopping several times to try to find a top that would coordinate with it because hello fashion, like love. So I went to Kohl's, Maurice's, Walmart, I mean, like, even Walmart, and I, like, seriously, I could not find anything that, like, went good with it. It, I was looking for, like, a certain tan or cream color, and I was, or I was looking for, like, maybe, like, a certain shade of green, and I just was not finding what I was looking for, okay, people? So, I just never wore the kimono. I wore it one time with a solid black shirt under it, and I didn't love it, and I was like, I gotta wait till I find something that goes with this. So I didn't wear it and just, I kept seeing it hanging up by my closet on my closet, like on the outside of my closet. I have a ho- hooks and I saw it hanging there like every day. And I'm like, I need to find something that goes with that because it's so pretty. And so still kept looking, couldn't find anything. And then a few days ago, I, you guys, if you saw my clothing, you, I, I need a walk-in closet. Like Lord Jesus, I pray that one day I have a walk-in closet with my shoes and my tops and my everything. Like I just would love, love, love all my jewelry that I don't even have yet. I'm just picturing this in my mind. Sorry, that was a little bit of a rabbit trail, but that would be absolutely perfect to me. So I have a lot of clothes. Okay. And you wouldn't know that because I wear like the same things all the time, but I mean, can I get a witness? I think everybody kind of does that falls into that. So I'm looking at this kimono and I'm like, I really want to wear this. It's so cute, but I have nothing that goes with it. Okay. I look over and I have a cami and I look back, uh, uh, like a really pretty, like, um, tan colored cami or whatever. And I, well, I mean, a tan colored cami isn't really pretty, but it literally is, was exactly the shade that I needed to go with the kimono. And I like grabbed both of them and I put it up together and I was like, oh my gosh, this matches. So I hurried up and I changed my outfit and I put it on and I'm like, looking in the mirror, I'm like, oh my gosh. This matches perfectly here. I've been shopping around for a top that would go with this. And I had it the whole time. And I just felt like God was speaking to my heart because I don't know about you guys, but I find like all the time, everyday life, things happen or people say things. And I can't tell you probably 
how many times a day that I say that's preachable, that's preachable, that's preachable. Like I'm always seeing like teaching points from different things that people say or do or things that I say or do or things I see. Um, and so literally when I put that together, the outfit together and I'm standing in the mirror and I'm looking at myself, I'm like, oh my gosh, like it just hit me. Like the Lord was speaking to my heart that he has already given us everything that we need. And which is such a, I just, Oh, I love him so much. And it just brought me to second Peter one, three, which I'm going to read in a second, but it was like, I already had what I needed to complete that outfit. Like I already had that in my wardrobe, but I didn't know it because I, I don't know why I didn't look, I didn't think about it. I didn't remember that I had that top, that cami that would match my kimono. And so God was just showing me, um, second Peter one, three, that says, his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. And he was just speaking to my heart so much this week about that, that everything that I need for life and godliness, and that's for you too, he has given it. Like, I didn't remember that I had that in my wardrobe because I hadn't looked through my wardrobe in a while. Like, I'm not kidding. I have so, so many clothes. It's ridiculous. If I would have just looked, I would have realized I had that cami and that it matched, but I didn't. I just went out looking for a cami or a, a top other places. And it just reminded me, like, sometimes we forget what we have in Christ and what his promises are and what he has given us. Like so many times we look at our relationship with God as like fire insurance. You guys have probably heard that a million times, but it's like insurance, like, okay, I'm good with God. Like I've given my heart to him so that when I die and go to heaven and we're good. And it's like, no, like God has things to do in your life and for you now. Like the word says that eternal life is knowing him. And so we can know him now before we pass away. And that's such a, to me, so sad um, to think about people that don't realize the beauty of relationship with God now that we can have. It's so good and it's so rich and so life-changing, like so life-changing. I just, I can't even imagine my life without him in it. And so as I was thinking about that, like I didn't know that my cami was there because I hadn't looked through my wardrobe in forever. I thought, oh my gosh, how many of God's promises am I not holding on to and declaring and decreeing over my life because I'm not in the word like I should be. And I will tell you that I am someone who is in the word daily and you know, everybody, what they do with their Bible reading or whatever. I mean, that looks different for all of us and it looks different day to day. So this definitely is like no condemnation or anything like that. I'm just saying there are days that I'm like, I, there's never a day that goes by that I'm not in the word at some, in some form or fashion, but there are days that are definitely better where I'm getting more out of it or I'm reading more or even it's, it's, sometimes it's not about the, the quantity. It's the quality of what I'm reading. Like, am I reading and actually letting it sink into my heart and grow roots in my heart and meditating on it? Like, I think it's more valuable to sit on a couple verses and just meditate it and like allow the Holy Spirit to reveal that truth and let it be deeply seated into your heart versus reading a whole book and then not getting anything out of it. So um, that's obviously a, a journey that you have to take with the Holy Spirit as you're reading the word. But that just hit me so much that like there are things that we are missing out on because we don't even look for it. We don't even realize that it's ours. And I love this, that it says his divine power has given us all things not some things, all things that pertain to life and godliness. So if there is anything that you need for life or godliness, he's given it to you. And there's so many more scriptures that are similar to this, that everything we need, he gives us everything that we need. He supplies all of our need according to his riches and glory, that he works all things together for our good. I mean, I'm just thinking of like a million different scriptures where he promises to be our provider. Like that is one of the names of God in scripture is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides. He takes care of us. He takes care of his people. And I just think about so many different times in my life where I've needed something or whatever. And God has always taken care of me. Even this last week, like I had a crazy week last week. Oh, it was crazy. And um, there goes my buffalo chicken dip. I'm pausing this because I have more to say. Okay, got my alarm shut off for my buffalo chicken dip, and I'm totally leaving this in here because I think a lot of people that are on my podcast have um, really had a heart to start a podcast and maybe just feel ill-equipped 
Um, I'm leaving all that in there so that you can see, like, you ain't got to be perfect to have a podcast. You just have to do what God showed you to do if he's shown you to do it. So anyway, so jumping back into that, like God gives us everything that we need. And so last week I was having a crazy week and my refrigerator broke down. And I was like, I'm not letting this stress me out. Like God has taken care of me always my entire life. He has always taken care of me. And so I'm not stressing this. Like the word says to have anxiety for nothing. And it says to cast our cares on him because he cares for us. And so just to be in that continual mindset of taking those things that make us anxious or frustrated and just being like, Lord, this is yours. Like your yoke is easy. Your burden is light. You carry my burdens, like giving it to him. And so that's what I did. And like literally within 24 hours, I had a new refrigerator for free from a family member. So that was a blessing. Um, wasn't an expense. I was thinking I was going to have a huge expense with buying a new refrigerator and I didn't have to. So that was amazing. And I just look back over my life over the last five years of being single, especially, and just being almost like apprehensive and nervous about what is this going to look like being out on my own and not having, you know, only having my income and whatever, all of these things. And it just being me and God has shown himself faithful in my life over and over and over and over again. And I know he will always be faithful to me. And, um, I don't know. I just, I can think of a a million different things that he's done in my life personally, just to prove himself faithful. And one thing that I've been saying a lot, and I might've said it in another podcast is that, um, I trust God. I trust God because he has never given me a reason not to and his track record and my life is good. And I love that because he is, he is so faithful and he is so good. And that's actually a conversation that I had with a friend. I don't even know when it was within the last few months about God that so many times we blame God for what the enemy does but then we don't give credit to God for what he does do. So like we're having, you know, we're being surrounded with blessings and God's doing awesome things in our life and we don't take the time to give him credit for it. But then when something happens that has a thumbprint of stealing, killing, and destroying, we automatically blame God. God, where were you? Why were you, why were you not there? Why didn't you cover me in this? Why did you allow this to happen to me? And that is such a, it's, it's such a human reaction. I mean, if that's, I've done that before. I can think of a time when I was uh, just so, I was having such a hard time and all I could cry out to God was why, why, why is this happening? And he's so good and faithful and you need to have a relationship with him that is real enough to be able to say why, to be able to ask him why and allow him to answer. And sometimes that answer doesn't unfold until you're on the other side of it. And even in my own life, I think about that and I'm like, yeah, God is so faithful and he just covers us. And so, yeah, back to the whole, like the thumbprints of the enemy and the, just to remind you that the enemy's objective, the word has so much to say about him. And there's so many teachings out right now that literally teach that the devil or the enemy, Satan, whatever you want to call him, is a figurative character that he's not real. What a doctrine of demons. Like the word talks about doctor I believe in either first or second Thessalonians maybe you can look it up, but it talks about um following doctrines of demons. And I'm like, what a demonic doctrine to teach that demons and the enemy aren't even real. Like how clever because then you're not gonna pray against them. You're not going to pull down strong colds. You're not going to tear down lies of the enemy. You're not going to fight the spiritual battle against him. Like the word says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. God doesn't put those strongholds up in our lives. That's the enemy. And so those strongholds can look like a million different things. I feel like I've said a million, a hundred times on this. I feel like I've said a million, a million times on this podcast, but for real, there are so many different strongholds that could be in our life. And that could be insecurity. That could be lies that we've just had deeply rooted inside of us. It could be addictions. It could be so many different things. But if we don't even believe that the enemy is real or whatever, like we will constantly blame God and then we will not fight the faith, the fight of faith properly and correctly. And that is such a thing that I just, Catherine Mullins, I love her. She's a worship leader. Look up her music if you've never heard it. 
amazing worship leader. And she was talking about that the other day about, she posted on Facebook something about how one of the biggest problems with our culture is that we have Christians who don't even pray. And I thought, wow, like I have had some incredible prayer time where I am just praying over my community and I'm asking God, show me what's going on in the spirit realm in this community. And I'm praying against spirits of addiction and praying for God to make himself known to the people in this community and, and just had some amazing, powerful prayer times. But how often, how often am I doing that? It's not often. How often am I covering my church? How often am I covering my family? How often am I covering myself in prayer? And I think I think a lot of it maybe is because prayer is mistaught or we just don't understand our authority in prayer. We don't understand like why we even need to pray. And I think one of the biggest misconceptions is that like if something happens, it's God's will. And I'm like, that is so not true. Like things happen all the time that are not God's heart and they're not God's best for his people. And they happen because we live in a fallen world and we have people who are not praying and interceding and taking authority and changing situations like your prayers can literally change situations and if you don't believe that I don't know what to tell you you're probably not going to be praying if you don't believe that your prayers are even effective and the book of James says that the prayers of a righteous person are powerful and effective effective to do what they're effective to change situations effective to change circumstances effective to shift things in the spirit realm and and have like a different outcome from what would have happened if that prayer wasn't there. And I literally, I'm thinking of a million because a million is my number today, a million different reasons or, or situations where prayer was so prayer is what brought the breakthrough in different situations. And I shared this on a podcast, a different podcast at some point, but for maybe new listeners, I'm going to share it again. And if you've heard it before, it can encourage you again that there was one morning I was on my way to work and I have like, as I'm driving to work when I used to work in cold water, now I work here in town. So I, I I should do redo this, but I always have a spot on my way to work where I pray for my family and I always have a spot on my way to work where I pray for my future husband. And then the rest of the time, I'm just like, Lord, show me what, what needs to be prayed for. And so this morning that specifically, this was at least a year and a half ago, maybe, I was on my way to work and I didn't even get out of town yet. And the Lord really impressed on my heart to intercede for the schools, which is not something that I typically pray for. I don't really, I never really thought about it. Now I do because I'm working in the schools, So I'm constantly praying for the schools, but just out of sight, out of mind, I don't have kids. And so I guess I just wasn't something on my radar. And so I just started praying and like canceling enemy assignments and, and, um, whatever the enemy had plotted and planned. I didn't know what it was, but I was just praying and interceding until I felt a release from it. And then went about my day, forgot about it, honestly. And then found out that afternoon that there was someone, a student who was apprehended with a loaded gun and they had targets and people that they had planned to kill. And they hopefully, you know, they got arrested, they were apprehended and everything. Hopefully they got the help that they need, um, for that. But the, I mean, like literally my school, little union city could have had a school shooting, which is like, everyone always says, well, that will never happen here. And like, and then it does, but like, I can't, couldn't even wrap my head around it when I found that out. And then I remembered like God had me interceding and I sure he had other believers in the area interceding too and canceling that. But We have to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit to even hear those nudges and allow him to speak to us. And that's one thing, like if I could pick like three things (laughs) that I could change about the body of Christ, one of them for sure would be to know their authority in prayer because it is so pivotal to our communities. First, our homes and what we do in our homes is an overflow into our community and then our state and our nation, but in the world. But I think so many people don't even realize the authority and the power that they have in their decrees and in their words and in their prayers and that your prayers truly do make a difference. And I don't know, I think our prayer lives would be a lot different if we really grasped that. And even now, as I'm sharing this, this is ministering to me as I'm sharing this, because I'm like, how serious have I been with my prayer life lately? Like, I don't know, I definitely am going to be seeking the Lord about that because in repenting for being lazy in prayer, honestly, like it really, 
boils down to that, just repenting and being like, Hey, I have not, I've been lazy in my prayer life and I'm turning around and I'm going to start taking it seriously. And even asking the Lord, like, show me what to pray for. Show me what specifically to pray for. Ask him even after this episode to put someone on your heart, like Lord, put someone in my life or it doesn't even have to be someone, you know, but put someone in my life on my heart to pray for, show me how to pray for them. And then it's also important to remember, like, when God reveals something to you, I heard someone say this and it really ministered to me. When God reveals something to you, it's because he wants to heal it. It's because he wants to bring freedom and bring breakthrough. And so there are times when he could show you something that is super vulnerable and super personal that someone is going through. That's called a word of knowledge. A word of knowledge, you can read about that in um, 1 Corinthians 12, I believe, where it talks about the gifts of the Spirit. You can look it up. Um, the different gifts of the spirit. One of them is the gift of knowledge and a gift of knowledge is like information that you would not know outside of God. And so, um, for instance, I, I came across a lady that I crossed paths with that was practicing witchcraft and instantly in my spirit, well, that could be discerning of the spirits too. I don't want to get confusing. Okay. I don't want to confuse you. So some, some gifts, it could be kind of one of both, but It was a word of knowledge, like the Lord spoke to my heart that she is practicing witchcraft and that he showed me that for a reason, not to freak me out, not to be like, oh, she practices witchcraft, like how satanic, like nothing like that. He showed me that because he wants to set that woman free. And actually, I'm going to be praying for her when I get off this podcast. He wants to set her free. That's why he showed me. And then also just to know, like, there's other reasons too, I guess, but He's showing me as I'm even sharing this, but when God shows you something about someone, it's not so that you can go repeat it. It's not so that you have like a new piece of gossip to be able to share with your girlfriends. Like if God shows you, Hey, so-and-so is struggling with this, or could be like, so-and-so is struggling with suicidal thoughts or so-and-so is, um, struggling with, with lustful thoughts and like infidelity or, or going, you know, going out on her marriage or whatever, however you want to say that like there are so many so many different things that God could reveal to you but I encourage you to ask him like Lord who could I pray for that I could intercede for on their I want to intercede for them I want to intercede on their behalf and see them set free from whatever it is because man I wish like I know I had people praying for me yesterday morning I had a couple of my girlfriends that were like hey I'm praying for you this morning and like I love that and I know sometimes you know, we should just pray for people that don't need to always know, but sometimes it's nice to know, like, I have you covered. Like, I care about you. I'm praying for you. I'm covering you in prayer today. It's nice to know that because we need that and it encourages us to pray for other people. So I encourage you to do that. And, um, this episode totally, I love the Lord. (laughs) I love the Lord. That was not at all what I planned on talking about today, but um, apparently it was what was on God's heart today to share about. So kind of covered a, a lot of different topics today, but you have everything you need for life and godliness. That was the verse that I had. Um, so God has given you everything you need. If there is something that you feel like he's calling you to step out in, to step out and do, know that he's got you covered and he's going to supply all of your needs, everything you need for everything he calls you to. He's covering you. So don't worry about a thing, child. Just do what he's called you to do. Step out and just trust him because he is so trustworthy. And even like the love chapter, it says love always trusts. And we know that God is love and he he's always trustworthy. There is nothing in him that makes him untrustworthy, if that's even a word. He deserves to be trusted because he is love and he is good and he is kind and he is faithful and I'm just so thankful for who he is and just a little reminders he gives me all day every day and different things that are preachable all day every day and lessons that he shows me throughout my day so it's super fun super fun being a Christian and I always say to people who are like being a Christian is so boring I'm like have you ever actually been a Christian like not religious I'm not talking about going to church like dry crusty stale bread type church on Sunday morning I'm like actually living a faith-filled life is far from boring. Like that would never be a word I would use to describe being a Christian. So you should try it. So anyway, I am going to end this podcast because listen, I want chicken dip. So I'm going to go get that, but I'm going to pray over you guys. 
before I end and just know that I'm so thankful for you guys and everyone who shares this podcast and listens in. It blesses me and I'm just thankful for my podcast community. So let's pray. Father God, I thank you so much for your new mercies, God, that you pour out pour out every single morning, God, and the new mercies that you poured out on us this morning when we woke up today. God, you are so good and you are so faithful. And Father, I thank you that you are reminding our hearts that there is nothing that we will ever need to do what you've called us to do or to live this life well, that you are not providing for us, that you are not giving us straight from your hand. God, you are so generous. You are such a generous God. And I thank you, God, that your word says you withhold no good thing from those who walk uprightly. And so, God, I pray that my listeners and myself, that we would be people who walk uprightly, that we would be holy as you are holy, God, that we would be peculiar people that are set apart unto you, God. And as we're living our lives for you and just being who you've called us to be and standing in that identity and our authority in you, God, you promise that you take good care of us, God, and you withhold nothing from us. And so I thank you, God, for every person that's listening in, Father, and I ask, God, if they are contending for a promise, Lord, I ask that they see the manifestation of that promise come to pass. I pray that over myself too, Father. I I thank you that you are so good that you give us promises, Lord. You are so good. I thank you for your promises, and I ask, Lord, if there's anyone listening in, and myself too, I'm including myself in all of these prayers, God, that If there is a promise that you have given that we have yet to know about or that you have yet to reveal to us, God, I pray that you would reveal it to our hearts. God, that we would stand in faith and contend for every promise that you have given us. And I bind the enemy right now over the the minds of my listeners. Father, I thank you for freedom and sound mind for them. God, I thank you that they are growing in their walk with you, that they're growing in their relationship with you. God, that you are revealing more of yourself to them, that you are making yourself known. God, I thank you that you pursue us and that you are passionate about knowing us way more than we could ever be about knowing you. God, you are so intimately acquainted with all of our ways. You are good. You're so good, Lord. I thank you for what you're doing in my life. I thank you for what you're doing in my podcast community. God, I thank you that you are faithful to continue the good work that you started. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.